have been a psychology professor since the 1970s and my specialty has always been aging. So since I was in my 20s, I've been thinking about aging and older adults and now I'm 67 and I'm still thinking about it. My background is in ministry. I was a pastor in the United Church of Christ for 30 some years, first in New Jersey and then for 23 years here in Appleton. And one part of that experience is that going back to the early days of our marriage, uh, church is a setting where you have far more opportunity to interact with older adults than most young folks do. And indeed, it was the older adults of the church who kind of took us in when we had nothing cared for us. They were mentors as well as friends. So we've had the great privilege of interacting with older folks all of our career. First of all, we found out about memory cafes from Facebook. I had no idea what they were. I went, you know, Googled, and I found out that there was this giant list of memory cafe locations in England. And I started writing to people and saying, I'm interested in learning more about this. And, and these people who I didn't know at all wrote back and they said, well, come and visit and you can stay with us and we'll take you to dinner, we'll have a party. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, the root of memory cafes is hospitality. Mm -hmm. And that's what these strangers to us in England showed us was hospitality. The goal of a memory cafe, and there are many ways of doing them, is to create a time and space where the playing field is level where a casual observer would have difficulty for quite a bit of time telling who has dementia and who doesn't, because we're all just having fun and joy together in a place where there's no stigma, there's no anxiety for the care partner, uh, don't have to worry about what he or she might do or say, because it's acceptable in this environment. This is about creative engagement. This is not about watching someone do something, but being a part of someone doing something. So it's silliness, it's fun, and it puts something on people's social calendars. It's something a couple or a child and a parent can go out and do together, or we encourage something as a friend you can take your friend with dementia to and both have a really good time and not have to worry about how I'm going to make conversation. We're going to do this together. Sharing joys together, socializing together, building this whole new web of friendship and support. I mean, that to me is the real power, not just what happens at the cafe, but the relationships that get woven together because of sharing in the life of the cafe. It's just powerful medicine for just making life good and joyous and filled with meaning again. We're very clear about saying the word dementia, um, and and we we sometimes will have um, an interactive program where we'll ask folks, you know, what can we do to make this community better for people living with dementia? Um, I mean, our brochure says "living well with dementia," which is always kind of really you can do that yeah well people wonder how is that, how's that possible it's so scary and horrible uh, and, and and what our argument is is that um, it's always going to be hard but when the community is there to offer various kinds of supports you can live well or live better with dementia <music> I would advise people to hopefully feel comfortable telling others, tell, tell your friends. Um, I got this diagnosis, but I still want to, you know, I want to keep playing bridge with you and I want to keep going fishing with you and I want to keep having our coffee clutch and whatever. Um, uh, and um, that's important, not just for the person with diagnosis, but for the care partner too. The care partner needs to understand that um, their loved one uh, can remain part of the fabric of community, uh, and so can they. Um, and, and friends need to be schooled a bit in communication and interaction, uh, but once they are, they may feel comfortable 
um, coming over to the home and the care partner wants to go shopping for the afternoon or something like that. A lot of care partners are afraid to leave. You know, they feel such a weight of responsibility. Um, but if we can demonstrate that, you know, we're here for you and people are trained. You don't need and, to do this alone. Right. You cannot do this alone. Uh, the community needs to be here for and with you. In all my years as a pastor, I tried to preach the universal wisdom of all the world's great relations, religions is that the fullest experience of life is to be fully present in the moment. And I preached it, I just never had a clue how to do it. And when I'm with my friends with dementia, particularly those with advanced dementia in care settings, they have been incredible mentors to me because the present moment is all they have. And if we're going to be friends, I have to join them in this moment. You've been to a memory cafe and you see what happens there. Uh, and um, it is a joyful experience. We all know that there is tremendous suffering uh, and, and, and we can't forget that, but there can also be joy. Educate, educate, <laughs> and educate, because in an educated community, we will reduce stigma, and if we reduce stigma, we will reduce fear, not only fear in the person receiving the diagnosis, but the fear of friends and others. We will come to see it as dementia is a disability accommodated with patience, kindness, and understanding. And I would argue that having more patience, kindness, and understanding in our communities is something that will benefit all of us. Mm -hmm.